In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on perpetual systems when it comes to inventory valuation. Now, this is the fourth in a series of videos concerning cost flow assumptions or cost formulas that we apply to the computation of inventory value, but also cost of sales that goes into the income statement. And we've seen LIFO, FIFO, average cost or AFCO, but in all of the prior videos, and by the way, links to those videos may be found in the description below. In all those previous videos, we were applying something called the periodic inventory system. In this video, I'm going to make a change and assume we're operating under a perpetual system, which you should know. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. All right, this is the... Uh, question we're going to have a go at. If you watch the previous three videos from this series, you will know this scenario by now. We've got a company that over the course of December has been making certain purchases and sales within a single line of inventory. Well, the difference this time is that we're assuming the company maintains a perpetual inventory system and we're being asked for its gross profit for the month of December in respect of the inventory line described above under both FIFO and LIFO. So basically, irrespective of which method we use or which assumption we use, LIFO, FIFO or AFCO, uh, we can be told that the company uses either a periodic system, as in the previous three videos, or perhaps a perpetual one. What does that mean? Well, a perpetual inventory system implies that changes in inventory are updated continuously and not just at the end of the period, like at the end of the month. So let's have a look. LIFO and FIFO. First of all, they're asking us for the gross profit. So in order to compute gross profit, we're going to need sales revenue. And this is a computation I've performed already in the other videos, so let's very quickly get this down. Sales revenue must have been, well, we sold 20 units on one occasion at a price of $62 um, dollars per unit. And on top of this, we sold a further 60 units towards the end of the month with a price of 63 per unit on that second occasion. Um, if we want to compute uh, the value, 20 times 62 plus 60 times 63, and this is 5,020, just like it was in the previous recordings. How about the cost of sales? Well, now it depends on whether we're doing LIFO or FIFO. Let me do LIFO over here. I'm going to have FIFO over here. So our cost of sales, or COS, simply because we're doing a perpetual system, it's not enough to say, well, we've, you know, we've sold a certain number of units and let's make a certain assumption that those units came from the most recent deliveries, which was what you do under um, this assumption. You have to be realistic this time in a perpetual system about what was available to be sold on specific dates. So in respect of the sale that happened on the 4th of December, when we sold 20 units at a price of 62 per unit, realistically, the only stuff that was really available was the effects of the purchases made um, a few days before that. Uh, 70 units were available at a price of $53 uh, per unit. So, you know, assumptions aside, those were the only units available to be sold. So those 20 units had a value to us or had a cost of purchase of 53. And 20 times 53 is going to give 1060. Now, when it comes to the next sale, and the next sale happened on the 27th of December, we sold 60 units on that, on that occasion uh, with uh, a price of 63 per unit, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the cost what, what price did we pay for those 60 units that left the company and went to clients? Under the LIFO assumption, I'm going to be assuming that the units sold on this occasion were the ones that were purchased most recently. 
And we had on this date at our disposal the 70 units that were purchased at a price of 58 per unit, didn't we? They were already physically in the company. So I'm assuming we used those up under last in, first out. The stuff that came in most recently is the first to leave the company. 60 times 58, 3,480 over here. Okay, so our total cost of sales is the sum of these two numbers, 4,540. So what's the gross profit? It must be the difference between sales revenue, which is, you know, the same uh, for LIFO, and in a moment I'll be doing FIFO over here, so I'll draw an arrow already. But 5,020 for the sales revenue figure minus the cost of sales, and that generates a profit of 480. If you have the time, please go back to the video when we also applied LIFO, but under the periodic inventory system, and you'll note and you'll see that the result in that exercise or in that question was just slightly different because we didn't have that realism in place, which prevented us from doing something, well, absurdly unrealistic, assuming that the 20 units which were sold initially may have come from a different delivery than the one which was physically available at the business. Okay, over to FIFO. First in, first out. Now, the cost of sales here, once again, let's take it line by line. 4th of December, we sold 20 units, which must have come from the earliest deliveries. So that's 20 times 53, giving a value of 1060, just like with uh, the uh, life of assumption. Being realistic means you can only sell what was physically available to you. However, on the next date, 27th of December, when we are selling um, 60 units, I'm going to assume that to the extent available, we are first using up what was there from the earlier delivery. So I'm using up the units still available from the purchase made initially, i.e. You know, what's oldest gets sent to clients first. So we still had 50 units left, which had a purchase price of 53. And on top of this, we must have used up from the later delivery an additional 10 units, seeing as the sale was for a total of 60 units. So 50 and 10, that gives us 60. And that second delivery was at a price of 58. Okay, let's see what we get. 50 times 53, that is plus 10 times 58. Okay, I've got a total here. I'm not bothering with the individual subtotals. This is 3,230. So my total cost of sales, sales sorry, must be 1,060 plus 3,230, 4,290. And therefore, my gross profit in this case would be the same, the same sales revenue as before, 5,020 minus 4,290. This gives a result of $730. What's the answer for? 480 and 730 respectively. This is in line with answer C, isn't it? So answer C over here provides the correct solution. However, one thing I want to note before we finish. The gross profit calculated for the far or under the FIFO cost flow assumption within a perpetual system is going to be always the same 
and let me write this down as the FIFO result under a periodic system. So always the same as under periodic system, but this only applies to FIFO, first in, first out. Because first in, first out has inbuilt into it this assumption that we use up whatever is already available first. We never inherently or by accident or without even knowing it will make this mistake of assuming or this unrealistic assumption that we send to the client something that wasn't physically there, which is part of what we would do under the periodic system if we were following LIFO or, or AFCO. Um, under FIFO, this result computed for um, for gross profit or indeed for closing inventory under the perpetual system is going to be the same as if you were doing the computation under the periodic system. A piece of information or a detail that may come in, come in handy in the exam and may save you potentially from doing too much work.